Why, hello, hello, everyone. Ashanti Titus here at Pocket Mail Financial Services. I hope that you are having an amazing day. Today, I want to talk about adding missing items from your bank statement that are actually on your bank statement, but they're not inside of QuickBooks. This happens a lot more frequently than people realize. Um, it's due to just like connection errors. Sometimes banks go offline. Sometimes QuickBooks goes offline. And there's information that's kind of lost um, and it's not updated you know, with that information once they come back online. Also, if you change your bank uh, password, um, sometimes that'll do it and you don't update it into QuickBooks, then it'll also cause some transactions not to come through the QuickBooks system. Either way, I'm going to show you how to add that information onto there. Um, it's very important that if you don't understand, like, I guess, like the fundamentals of the cash accounts, make sure you check out my video where I talk about the fundamentals of your cash account and how it works. Um, just a quick synopsis. It is flipped. It's backwards from the bank statement. And I'll show you what I'm talking about here, or you can actually check that video out, but you'll kind of see it in action in this particular video where I'm going through this um, hypothetical situation. All right. So in this situation, we're going to pretend that we have a transaction that came through that was a deduction from our business bank account and we were paying for our Adobe software, okay? So essentially, what two accounts were actually affected? The cash account was affected and then also your software account was affected, okay? So your soft, your actual your bank statement or your bank was reduced and then you actually have an increase in expenses, right? So in that case, you're gonna credit your bank account and you're gonna debit that expense account. And one of the crucial things is when you're inside of QuickBooks, make sure that you are choosing the proper bank account, um, the one with the real you know, activity that's in it. If you have multiple bank accounts, please choose the right one or you're gonna have a nightmare on your hands as it pertains to reconciliation, especially if you have multiple transactions that came through or didn't come through and now you're trying to add those okay so i'm going to show you exactly how to do this okay so let's go ahead and go over so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to click on the new button and then you're going to click on journal entry okay and once you're on when you click that button you should see this screen right here the next thing you're going to do is you're going to make note of the actual date that the transaction came through and you're gonna make sure that this date is reflective of the actual date that that transaction came through your bank account. We're gonna go and go ahead and roll with June the 1st, 2022. We're also gonna go ahead and change, uh, make sure our journal entry number is like kind of a format that kind of lets us know what it is. Um, so I'm gonna put, so software expense and then 622 for the month of June 22, okay? That's how I'm gonna format mine. So any of my journal entries, I'll know what month it was and I know that it's an expense as well, okay? So the very first thing, a lot of people, you know, like it's like the, I guess the formatic way is that people put the debits first and then the credit second. We learned, learned it that way in school. However, you don't necessarily have to do it that way. Regardless, it's gonna hit the proper accounts. So you wanna make sure that you're finding the correct expense account. So in this case, I'm going to, find my software, my office supplies and software account, and I'm gonna put it right here. So I'm gonna click on this and find software account. And if I don't have it, you need to add it, okay? So we're gonna do that. All right, so my software account or my expense account is always gonna be a debit unless I'm getting a refund back from something that I'm paying. So in this case, we're gonna say that our expense is $100. We're gonna debit this software account for $100 and then I'm gonna go ahead and type in Adobe software here and then I'm gonna find Adobe right here for the name and that's how we're gonna do that part and we're gonna move on to the bank. So you're gonna make sure that you choose the appropriate bank account and then since it's a reduction to the bank account, you're gonna put it as a credit. It always There always has to be an equal debit and credit, okay? So even if you have a bunch of debits, they, all of those debits should total the credit amount. And for the description, I'm gonna put Adobe software and you're gonna choose Adobe here. Don't, you don't have, a lot of people won't have this class feature. This class feature is essentially for individuals who have a different type of, or um, a more advanced type of reporting, okay? So literally from this point to this point is what you need to fill out. You just click save and close. 
And that is it. So hopefully you found this video helpful. If you found this video helpful, please give this video a thumbs up and share with a fellow entrepreneur. We are doing our best to assist as many entrepreneurs as we can to bring you valuable content and information. And if you need assistance with bookkeeping or accounting for your business, definitely give us a ring. You can email me also at ashanti at profit-mlde.com. I will leave my contact information in the description box. Until next time, stay profitable and stay great. Bye-bye.